morning. Um, I was just chatting to the ladies at the front. I was here probably last year sometime, and just saying it's, it's so nice to go and spend time with other churches, knowing that there's churches meeting across Ashford that are worshiping Jesus, that are declaring His name, and um, the hope that goes with that for our town. So it's just a real pleasure to be here again, to be with you guys. And um, yeah, you've got me for the preach this morning. So I'm. We're doing. It's called to pray, is what the topic is. And sometimes we can feel like we have a calling on our life. Like some people, it will be to mission abroad. Others, it will be to live where you are and to be in your neighbourhood. Sometimes we can feel like our life can have no calling. You can feel lost. But we all have the same calling, is that we're called to pray. Um, so hopefully this morning that you will just go away encouraged this, uh, to go and pray a little bit more this week because I by no means am perfected this and so when I've written this it's challenging to me I'm like Lord inspire me help me to pray more because we know that when we pray God moves and works um, so I then ask myself Debbie why what stops me from praying more when I know that God is at work in my prayers um, so yes, that's what we're doing this morning. Is that okay? Yes, okay, good. Otherwise we'll be a bit lost if it wasn't, but there we go. Um, so yes, as I say, my name's Debbie and it's just a lovely to be here. Um, so my first question to you, I've got to use a clicker. If it's not moved on to what I'm, I'm now talking about, please tell me to click it on because it will be uh, hard to remember. Um, my question to pose, this is a hypothetical question, um, is just to sit with for the moment is do you pray because i never want to assume that people pray because sometimes we go through seasons where it's just really hard for whatever reasons and we step away from praying you might not be a christian whatever but do you pray and why and why not just going to let it sit for a minute do you pray and why and why not because there's no judgment here it's not about making us feel bad it's just posing the question because we want to live in discipleship with jesus do you pray and why and why not because prayer, we can say, is a very common aspect of many faiths. It's not um, not just in Christianity. If you were to talk to other faiths, people would say they pray or they meditate, might be another word. Um, those that believe in universalism or Mother Nature might put their prayers out to those things. But what's the difference between how, who we're praying to and what other faiths and other beliefs pray to? And the wonderful thing is, is that we know Scripture tells us that God is set apart. He is the highest authority. In the songs we sung, he's the beginning and the end. And in that, he has all authority over everything. So that is one reason why we pray. And it sets us apart from what other people pray and who they're praying to. And he also says, when Jesus came, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So we know that when we're praying, we're praying to the one that is life, that breathes life on our prayers, that breathes life on us, which is also remarkable. And that we know when we pray that it changes things. Why? Because we've seen time and time again, you look back through scripture, there's so many people that are praying out to God, asking for help, asking for rescue, asking for change. And we see multiple stories of where God intervened and he changed, answered prayer, move situations so yes and it wouldn't take us long to go around this room if you've been a christian for a while where you can recount some answers to prayer in your own walk we might have a catalogue of unanswered prayer still but we can testify to god's goodness and how he has answered prayer which is again why we pray and why not so the why why not bit i was then like well for me there's two reasons why we pray. All this, what I've just said, is good. And there's two reasons why I think I choose to pray and what I... See, I'm not clicking along quick enough, am I? There we go. The two reasons I came up to as when we come to pray. Firstly, the reason Jesus died on the cross for you is so that God the Father can have relationship with you and with me. It starts with relationship. It's a means of being able to, for God to draw near to you and you to him, for God to be able to connect with you and you to him, for you to be seen, and for 
you to be in a relationship. So I don't know about you, when you make a new friend, what's something you might do? You might go for a coffee together, you might invite them to your house, you spend time together. And then in that instance, you then spend time talking with one another and also listening to one another and responding in kind. And this is very much the relationship that sets Christianity apart. It's that God the Father wants a personal relationship with each and every one of us and wants to know you dearly. And secondly, he also wants to partner with you to accomplish his work. Mind-boggling. Absolutely mind-boggling. That God, the one who is all authority, wants to partner with you and I to accomplish his work. Because the more we pray, the more we see God at work in our lives and those around us. It's just phenomenal. And a chap called Victor Morris said this. He said, prayer is basic to everything that God does on earth. We recognize that God is sovereign and can do anything he chooses. The fact is, though, that he has sovereignly chosen to accomplish his work through prayer. We might not understand why that is, but that is what he's chosen to do. So what I've done is I've brought uh, well, a few videos of people from the where I go to church at Gateway, where they they have prayed and God has answered. Because again, I want you to go away encouraged today to keep persisting in prayer, because God is faithful, He is good, and does answer. So the first video we have is from a family. So we've got Henry and Victoria and their daughter Faith, and their daughter Faith has been having a, an experience of really bad eczema um, over a, a year or two and it's just she's been in a huge amount of discomfort and pain with it and this is their story. So we 
Uh, we start thinking, we're asking too much of God, so I'm just going to make my prayer a little bit more manageable for him to answer. Because I was going to ask for a healing, but now I'm just going to ask for a medical appointment. I was going to ask for a change in my finances, but I'm just going to ask for enough money to get me through this week. We start to reduce our, our level of expectation. Um, I don't know if you've done that, I certainly have. Uh, we start not meeting with others to pray because we feel judged. Their prayers get answered, mine doesn't. So I'm not going to turn up to that thing. So we stop meeting with others to pray. And the Bible teaches us to meet together. And one of those things that we do is pray. And you are worthy. You are worthy of prayer. God would love to hear your prayers and for you to encourage others as well in that. And sometimes the change in action can, it can avoid us spending less time <coughs> with God himself. So if you go, if you're not answering my prayers, actually it's easier to avoid you. A bit like when you've got into an argument with someone or someone you've had a little bit of a funny thing you think it's easier to avoid you than have this conversation and sometimes we do that with god as well we go father i don't understand what's going on here so the easiest thing here is to avoid you because that's more comfortable for me because i don't know want to live with the mystery of why prayer is answered and not sometimes so and then we can lead to disappointment i don't know if you've ever felt disappointment from an answer prayer it can lead to feeling like it's unjust and unfair, so why should I bother anyway? It can lead to us feeling quite bitter. And bitterness is like a poison that we're trying to give to somebody else, but actually we're taking ourselves. I think Nelson Mandela said that quote. Um, and anger. And all these things, I'm not, I'm not bringing them up because they're, they're sort of, I don't want us to feel heavy about it, but they're just real, aren't they? They're just part of being humans. You and I are just trying to figure out how to do things and invite God into that process. And um, thankfully, we have the Holy Spirit to help us, who is very kind, very gentle, very patient, very loving. And here, isn't he wonderful when they're so forgiving and says, come back, come back again. Don't worry that you went away. We come back and we go again. Um, so yeah, so the next question is, so what do we do in this situation when we lose heart? What do we do? Do we do these things? Do we, we get stuck? There's three things, again, that I would say that we can do that just helps us be spiritually healthy as well as emotionally healthy is we can acknowledge that we do live with a mystery of not understanding the why some prayers aren't answered. There is a mystery in following Jesus, and that is okay. Because the Bible gives us a lot to go on, but also it gives, leaves us with a lot of questions. But it leaves us with the foundation that we do know that God is sovereign, he has authority over all things, and that we do witness and can testify to answered prayer, and that he has the power to answer things, that we can persist in it. We can secondly check ourselves, see if we've started believing lies, that if it's changed our actions or not, and just do a bit of an internal review. Um, and then thirdly, again, we just remind ourselves of who God is, what he has said, and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to go again. Because each day we get up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, help me go again. Because some days are hard, some days are good, but the Holy Spirit is always there to help me. Now the passage that we read earlier, this one, very small one there, is, is Jesus speaking. He's telling a parable. He's been asked a question about prayer, basically. I'm going to read it again, just because it, it, it answers some questions and poses maybe another. And it says so, and Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought to pray, ought always to pray and not to lose heart. So we can take this as Jesus saying this to us, is he is telling you, don't lose heart and always pray. He said in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man, and there was a widow in that city coming to him and saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterwards he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find
find faith on earth. And I've sort of nailed it down saying Jesus tells this parable. I'm just going to read this bit out. Jesus tells us this parable, the importance of persistence in prayer, and he assures us that God will respond to persistent, faithful prayers. Because as we learned earlier, he wants a relationship with you, and he wants to partner with you to accomplish his work for yourself, for the other people, for the circumstances around you. So the more we pray, the more we will see God's work in our lives and in the life of the church. Now, I don't know about you, when I first read this passage when I was younger, and even when I read it uh, sort of more recently, is there's a part of me that goes, oh, it sounds a little bit like a nagging woman. Like, you know, to put it into our cultural context, we go, hang on a minute, Jesus. It sounds like this story is the prayer was answered just because she was nagging for a really long time. And then we start to think, oh, Jesus, is that how you want me to pray? Sort of to be a nagging person? Is that what it needs to feel like? And the good news is that's not the case. And uh, it, there's, there's a very good saying by Martin Luther that just puts this into context. It's a, it says, uh, he says that prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance. Because that's what nagging can feel like, isn't it? Somebody's not paying attention or they're reluctant to do what you want. But it's laying hold of his willingness. And Jesus is encouraging us to be persistent because he knows our humanity, <coughs> that we can give up easily, that we can lay things to rest a bit too soon, and or we can forget that God wants to be involved. He's encouraging us to be persistent in our prayers. Not because we're overcoming God's reluctance, but because we're uh, connecting him with God's willingness. Um, and talking of persistence in prayer, I uh, so at the building where the church is, every year we get two seagulls living on the roof. It's been a thing for years, but they've never been a bother, right? And they'll have some babies and then they disappear for the most of the year. And uh, so I work in the building and I went up on the roof. We have a flat roof and it just needed checking. I manage our building. And um, the, the seagull was right there, and they're like, Arr! and so I thought, oh, it's fine, they're usually fine. So I went out on the roof, and then suddenly the seagull called his other seagull friend, and then the other seagull friend comes over, and I'm like, Arr! so I then go down the other end of the roof, going, okay, you need some space, that's fine. But then what happened? Those two seagull friends called some more friends, and so I'm now being dive bombed by these seagulls. And it's probably up there with one of the most stressful experiences <laughs> that I've experienced in a number of years. And they just keep coming. And you know where the dump is over that way. So they've now let out a call to about 30 or 40 seagulls, which are all now flying overhead and swooping and trying to get me off the roof because they clearly had some eggs or some whether they'd hatched or not. So at this point, I scarper off the roof running along, I've grabbed a broom at this point and I'm sweeping it around, looking ridiculous and I get off the roof but not only them once I was off the roof, I was down on the floor <coughs> they were still not happy and they chased me all the way around the front of the building back through the front door what were they? they were persistent they changed my decisions and I know it's a bit of a silly story but it just helps us understand persistence can change things it lays into the willingness of God's heart because we know that when we look at the fruits of the Spirit, that is a reflection of who God is. He is kind. He is righteous. He is full of joy. He's all these things. And so my encouragement to you, if you don't remember anything about today, remember seagulls and how persistent they are and use that as a reminder to be persistent in prayer over one or two things and just lay hold of God's willingness. Um, the next story I have I won't use the video because it'll probably be a bit too quiet as well. This lady is called Simi, and um, a few weeks ago we were just chatting her after church, and she was telling me about her parents, and her children haven't seen her parents, so their grandparents, for about five, six, seven, eight years, something around there. And they've tried to get visas before just to come over and visit and have a holiday, um, and every time it's been denied and just really frustrating <coughs> and upsetting. And, um, so we said, right, well, she said, they're, they're, we're doing their paperwork again, so let's pray. 
Let's pray. It didn't happen last time, but we're not going to stop praying. And we're going to lay hold of God's willingness and say, Father, please, 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 can you connect this family so that the grandparents can see their grandchildren, that they can be together. And, um, yeah. And literally within about a week later, and it should take weeks for visas to go through, especially in their situation, um, they got their paperwork back to say they could come. And what a delight that is, that they could rejoice. And in a few weeks' time, there will be family together. And it's just going to be such a meaningful time for them uh, to connect. And, you know, my prayer is that they will just connect deeply and really meaningfully, because they will go away again and experience that separation again. But, um, yes, so that was just a, a real answer to prayer for Simeon, and just a wonderful thing. Um, so my third question. What is one thing you are, or one thing you could be, praying for persistently this week? Just a question to ask. Because we're called to pray and pray persistently. We're called to just call on that willingness of our Father, and to sit with the mystery of not always understanding why they're not answered. So how do we pray, and how can our prayers be effective? Well, I don't know about you, I'm, like, I can write all this down, but I'm not usually the best with words. But when I was writing this, just I felt it on my heart that actually Jesus gave, gave us the Lord's Prayer. When we get lost with prayers, or you've been praying for something persistently and you've run out of things to say, or even as asked for, go back to the Lord's Prayer, because it will just equip you to say the things that you need to express your heart. And... Um, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So it demonstrates to us that at first, when we pray, we can submit our lives to his plans, at his purposes, and we know they are good. So we can trust him with that. So we submit first. And then it's followed by, give us today our daily bread. And you can add into that, Father, give, us, give me today everything that I need everything that you're going to resource me for today, and all the challenges I'm going to face, for the prayers that I'm experiencing that aren't being answered, that Father, I submit all these things to you. Lord, give me today what I need. And um, there's another uh, story that struck me, which was, do you remember Jesus in Gethsemane? So before he gets um, arrested, him and the disciples go and hang out in um, Gethsemane Gardens, and Jesus goes away to pray a few times during this time. And he says, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He was also, it's God that fully as man there. He was going, Lord, if I don't have to do this, please take this away. He expressed his full heart there, didn't he? He wasn't denying who God was. Because he then follows it up with, but as you will. He submitted his feelings to his father and said, but your kingdom come, your will be done. And we can do that. You can be totally honest in your prayer life and go, Father, if I need my situation to change. I'm feeling desperate here. But we can also then just bring it into, but your kingdom come, your will be done. And we can see God at work in them. Now there was another video, a lady called Katie, and she's She's a remarkable lady, but if I was ever to tell that to her face, she would wilt. She'd hate it. <laughs> um, she had a situation uh, a year or so ago where she was having to go to court due to a difficult relationship. And things were coming to her head. And she was really struggling at the time. And she was getting a lot of prayer support, a lot of encouragement, a lot of practical support as well. And uh, she, she says in her video that on this day where a certain thing was coming to head, that she was just praying for God's peace and his power to change the situation. And literally the outcome of what it should have been <coughs> versus what happened, completely flipped on his head. So that everything, the person that was causing the issues dropped everything and it just turned the whole situation around. I can't say too much because it's her story, but just be encouraged that if you are in a difficult situation, God can change things, because he did so for her as well. 
And it's a year later where she's now just starting to own her own story. And rather than dismissing something that's been really hard, going, Father, your will be done in my life, and I submit my story to you, and you can now use it to encourage other people. So we've heard a few stories of answers to prayer. And uh, maybe at tea time, like afterwards, or when you go home, just recount back some of the things that you have experienced answers to prayer for. And then remember the things that you need to persistently pray for. What's one thing that you can pray for this week? And some ways to do that is we can individually pray. We can use uh, things like there's a 24-7 prayer, Pete Gregg. He has an app which does a devotional in the morning and a devotional in the evening. Includes reflective prayer in that. You can, if you're a fidgeter, go for a walk. Pray for your town. Pray for the street that you live on. Use creative methods. Like if you need tools to help you to pray, try them out. And pray with friends and family. Pray with those that you trust. Pray with our brothers and sisters at church. If if you know and get along with somebody well that also prays in person, online. I see you've got your your prayer meeting on at seven o'clock. Um, Get around other people to pray. If you don't feel like you pray well, let me encourage you, you do. Because when you pray, you're talking to your father, so you automatically pray well. It's not about articulating or academia, it's about talking with your father. And I would encourage you, don't, don't let shame stop you from praying with other people. Praying with other people is important because you build them up and they can build you up. But often our self-worth can get in the way and go, oh, I can't say this, pray that out loud. Just, I would encourage you, if you've not prayed out loud before, get with a friend and just say, I want to have a go at praying out loud. And they will encourage you all the way. Um, and then there's obviously there's tools like the 24-7 prayer. You've got the Evangelical Alliance that gives you stuff to pray for. You've got the Barnabas Aid that tells you all about different things that you can pray for if you're feeling stuck with knowing how to pray for things other than your own situation. Um, and then obviously, pray with the church. Pray with your church. Pray for the church, because Jesus loves the church, so pray for your church, and uh, pray with those in your church as well. Right, I am drawing to a close. So I hope, I hope today you've been encouraged a little bit. Your prayers are powerful and effective, not because you hold the power, but because God does. <coughs> and he wants to join you in seeing things happen. The more we pray, the more he'll do. And Romans 12, 12 says, Rejoicing in hope, being patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. So shall I pray to finish? Does that sound all right? Do you want to stand with me? Is that all right if you're able? We'll just commit this all back to, back to him because he's the one that does the good work. This isn't about being obligated. This is about being a relationship. So yes, Father, we thank you that prayer is powerful and that it connects us with your heart. It aligns our lives with your will and it can bring about miraculous change. Just as Jesus taught us, help us, Lord, to be persistent in prayer. Help us to be faith-filled and believing you can move mountains, heal hearts and transform communities. Help us not to give up, Father, to keep praying with faith, passion and perseverance. Holy Spirit, give life to our prayers that they may spark a wave of hope and renewal. Father, we commit ourselves afresh to a continuous prayer and watch expectantly for you to work wonders in our lives and in our world. Amen. 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 Thank you.